Welcome to another episode of the Fitness Business Freedom Show. Today, we're excited to bring you another powerful guest episode. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with an author of The Untold Secrets of Bodybuilding, a student of Bob Gruskin, who is the original training guru and founder of Championship Muscle YouTube channel. Safe to say our guest today has been around the block and has put in his time to get to where he is today. So without further ado, let's welcome Richard Palatano to the show. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate the invite. Yeah, it's, it's our pleasure to, to have you on here and to be able to share a little bit of your journey and your, and your background and what you've, uh, how you've started building momentum in your own business. And since obviously we're keeping this focus on the, the business end of fitness, I really wanted to tap into your insights around uh, driving growth from YouTube, because uh, that's mm -hmm. as we, I, you and I went back and forth and chat a little bit. Like, it's definitely not an easy platform to master and to, oh, to build no. any type of traction on. So, like, no. what, uh, what, what, like, what led to you landing on, like, kind of going all in on YouTube or focusing on YouTube? You know, I was asked probably ten years ago to go on YouTube, and. I'm not the most IT technical savvy guy. And I'm like, no, it, it just wasn't my thing. <laughs> and everyone, you know, the guys that were training and coaching were like, look, you need to put your information out there because there's so much garbage out there. Everything that you talk about that I learned through Bob Ruskin over the years, and it's I, I was part of uh, Bob's family since I was about 17, 18 years old. Very fortunate, they go, you need to put it out there so people really know the truth behind training and nutrition and not all this nonsense gym bro talk that you hear mm -hmm. that's prevalent in every gym you know it's it's and it's in every gym all over the all over the world the bro talk oh yeah Absolutely. some of it's good most of it's garbage yeah <laughs> most, of, most of it's garbage that is for sure there's stuff that's like we're and definitely no lack of information. And unfortunately, a lot of that information is not good information. <laughs> no. And it, it forces you to to really sift through. Like, like you really almost have to have a certain level of knowledge to really even decipher the information that you're seeing. Uh, yeah. Because otherwise you can really go down some interesting paths. A lot of misinformation out there. Oh, my gosh. So much misinformation out there. That and it, it's is. sad, but the people that's putting out all this misinformation have millions of followers, and I, I just shake yeah. my head. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I don't get it. You get the skinny kid with no belt doing 50 push-ups, 300,000 followers. I have 43 years in the business. I was a champion when I was 23 years old, and I just hit 32,000 subscribers. I'm like, what am I not doing? I mean, what's <laughs> YouTube is... They don't give you an instruction book that says, here you go, read the first three chapters. It'll get you up and going. There's yeah. no manual when it comes to learning how to do YouTube and a lot of trial and error. My gosh, so, a lot of what, trial what and error. Um, what did those early days look like for you, like with, with the, utilizing the platform? First, if you don't have any knowledge of working cameras, you have to learn how to work a camera. And there's a lot of information on YouTube on what cameras are good to start a YouTube channel with. So I did my research and I got a Canon M50 and it's a very, very good camera. I used it for my, probably my first two years and it did well. But then you got to learn how to do the different angle shots and you got to have a person who's working the camera if you're not doing it on a tripod yourself to get the right angle shots. And then, and then I'm listening to this one guy, one podcaster talking about, you, you need your B-roll. What the <laughs> hell is B-roll? I, I mean, you, you learn as you go. I mean, there's no, there's no user-friendly manual. So every time I heard something new, because I used to follow vidIQ, and I still do, mm. and every time I heard a new thing, I'd jump on vidIQ and research it and listen and watch a whole bunch of videos to learn and understand what in the heck they were talking about. Yeah. And you learn. I mean, it's like, yeah. you know, they, they should have a YouTube university. They really should. It would be a yeah. billion dollar market. They should have a YouTube university. Yeah. You would learn so much and not make the mistakes that I made and so many people made in the beginning. 
No, 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 yeah, absolutely. That that would that would be uh, that would be too easy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to, oh to have gosh. something like that. But, so in those early days, like, were you getting much traction on your content? No, I was getting very little views because I didn't. First, you're learning how to upload the videos in the YouTube studio, which is your building blocks of your video. So you put a title, you know, I went fishing today, for example, and you put a description and then you got to put tags. You don't have the right title that's searchable, the right description with the high highly searchable keywords the highly searchable tags the video goes nowhere i've had videos with less than 10 views and, I'm, and the information is so good i'm just shaking my head i don't understand it why aren't people watching this video there's so much that has to go into building that video a title that has you could find the cure for cancer this is how you cure cancer if you don't have a title that's highly searched with keywords, a description, short and sweet, describing those keywords, hashtags for the highly searched cancer keywords, and the tags in the bottom, your cure for cancer is going nowhere. And you are the cure for cancer, and you're going to get next to nothing. It's crazy how YouTube works. It really is. And then there's yeah. the scammers, the YouTube scammers who tell you, you need me to help build your channel growth. You know, you need good SEO, search engine optimization, and you get, you need to run Google promotions and Google promotions are the worst thing you could ever do for your channel. I did it for quite a, quite a, too many times. <laughs> and you get all the, you get the, the top, not, how can I put it? Your video is getting views. You're going to get your five or 10,000 views, depending on how long of a promotion you're running, but you're not getting the viewing time. So it's garbage yeah. and it takes you out of the algorithm. So YouTube's algorithm is not pushing you. The Google ads for the YouTube advertising is pushing you. And once the ad dies, the video dies yeah. and it goes nowhere. And I'm like, man, I only got like 42 hours and 10,000 views. That's not a lot of viewing time and there's no subscribers. You, you learn as you go, man, you make some mistakes. And if, if I didn't get three or four people a day telling me, Oh, your channel suffering, your SEO is horrible. And they'll send me a screenshot of what the analytics are in a particular video. And I know what my analytics. So I happen to hire a very good SEO guy and I know what the analytics are. And they're showing this Photoshop made up where, oh, you're only 40 out of 100% on, on the SEO and this is suffering and this is suffering. They really tug at your heartstrings because people yeah. buy into this all the time. Yeah. And no, I just, I just fired a guy who was coming after me a lot trying to do SEO for me. And I kept seeing him putting analytics of other channels and the analytics looked good. I finally said, okay, I'm going to give you six videos. This one, five that have previously been out there that weren't doing so good. And one that needs 100% SEO from scratch, build it. Let me see what you can do. So he does it. Title, description, tags, video goes live. Slow to start. I'm watching the analytics. I'm like, ah, okay, not a bad thing. Sometimes it takes a day or so for it to really hit the algorithm. I go to bed at 10 o'clock that night, and this actually happened last week. I wake up around midnight, a little after, you go use the restroom, and I check my phone. And all of a sudden, I'm at 3,000 views. I'm like, oh, shit. Did I just go viral? Because I had a viral video in the past. I said, did this thing go viral? Yeah. Let me check my analytics. Go and check the analytics. YouTube advertising. I'm like, you son of a B. Oh. He thought he was trying to pull a fast one on me, thinking his SEO was the greatest. And I wouldn't pick up on the 
on the YouTube advertising, the Google ads. And I messaged him. I said, you just screwed me and you screwed yourself because I was going to have you go through every one of my videos, all 320 videos, and redo all the SEO to make sure that everything is hitting that algorithm. And you just pulled a fast one by putting YouTube advertising on my current video, thinking I wouldn't find out. I've been in this for almost three years. I know what goes on in my analytics. Yeah. Learn as you go. Now, I know. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. You're an SEO. You sold me as an SEO expert. You didn't mean it. You didn't even have my permission to do it. That's so I had to stop. I had to unlist the video immediately. Mm. And then I had to wait about four days, re-upload the video, re-SEO it all on my own, and I put it back out there. And he's been messaging me every day for the past two weeks. And I've and I just been de deleting his messages. We're done. There is no second chance. You ruined a video that could have gone and done very well by trying to pull a fast one for me to think that your SEO was the pristine SEO and you screwed me. No, we're done. Damn. That's wild. I don't, that's pretty crazy. I have not heard any marketer do that before. Were there, like, he, so he was basically, obviously, he was using your ad accounts. So, you're, so you were paying for those ads, correct? He was paying for it. It came out of his pocket. He ran the Google ad on my video without my, now if I give you permission, you can do it. He did it without my permission, thinking he's wow. going to try to pull a fast one to make this video go crazy to make his SEO seem like he's the guru. No, That's you wild. just, yeah, I was not happy, man. I was, I was pissed. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was That's, pissed. I haven't heard anybody be that, that bold. Yeah, that was the first time that's ever happened to me. The, I was just beside myself and he was fired immediately yeah. at 12 wow. o'clock at night. I messaged yeah. him and he's in <laughs> India he, and he was yeah. fired. At, he was fired at midnight. And every day he's messaging me and I'm just deleting the messages, not even reading them. Well, that, that definitely highlights a, a point too. It's like being the owner of like your business. I mean, you have to be in control. You have to have your hands a part of things. It's not like you can be like hands off and just be like, hey, or just take the keys and run with it. Uh, like you have to know what's going on and have a pulse because like quickly things can, can go in a direction that obviously you don't want them to go into. You, you have to make sure that the guy that's editing your video is editing the way you want because there's two forms of editing. There's the short form, which is that less than 60 second YouTube video. And then there's the long form, anything over 60 seconds. Well, the short form, people want entertainment. They want to see graphics and and cartoonish stuff, and they want to see all that graphic stuff. It's an attention getter because you only got them for less than 60 seconds, and the hottest videos are like a 27 second video. So the editing is different. The longer version, as you know, with I can only speak for my channel, my people don't want to see all that crazy graphic stuff. They're coming to see me raw. They like the way I put it out there. I don't sugarcoat it. I don't powder coat it. I drop some F-bombs, but I'm telling the truth about what needs to be spoken. They don't want to see all the crazy graphics and all the crazy kind of B-roll. Some is okay. Texting is okay on the bottom when you, you know, texting my speech. That's fine. And that's what they like because I had a video probably last year that had all this crazy graphic stuff and a car engine zooming as I was training to make this video speed up. And I'm thinking, what the frick is this? And it's like, what is he, what the hell happened to that video? I said, my mistake. I'm sorry. I, I didn't, ex I didn't proof the video. I just put it up. So now every video I get my analyst, my, my editor guy has access to my channel. He uploads it unlisted. I go and view the video. And I tell them, yay or nay, this needs to be changed or no, nope, great job, thank you very much. You have to stay on top of every everything yeah. you gotta stay on top of. No, yeah, you definitely everything. do. So with your how you mentioned how you're saying, knowing how your audience likes to absorb the content from you, is that something you knew right away or had to figure out a little bit through trial and error? The comments. I get a lot of comments on my videos and some some creators don't respond to the comments. 
I respond to every single comment. You ask anyone that ever hangs around me, I'm on my phone, looking at my YouTube stuff, checking the comments, no matter where I'm at, I'm always trying to keep up with everything. Because if you took the time to watch my video and leave a comment, which a lot of times are questions, I'm going to take the time to answer your question. Because without you, my channel would be nothing. So I, yeah. I stay on top of it as much as I possibly can. Within a few hours, you're going to get a response, if not within the first 15, 20, or 30 minutes of posting your comment. You're going to hear from me directly. No, that's that's powerful. I mean, and that's creating an experience. You're, you're now creating experience with each person, obviously, that interacts right. with you. And it's that's that right. me memorable. And yes. they're going to remember the interaction they had with you versus another channel or another video or something like that. Right. Where they don't get it. Uh, so that's cool. That's that's leveling up, obviously, like how, like in a way, your customer service experience. Yes. Uh, of, of how yes. people interact with you. So that's that's an awesome takeaway to to point out there. So I, I wanted to go back a little bit to your your mindset around starting, you know, like how you you didn't have the traction right away. You weren't getting like the movement. That really obviously can affect a lot of people. Like, a lot of people get frustrated with like different avenues that they try and don't yes. see anything. What yes. kept you going? What kept you thinking, thinking that, like, okay, this is, I'm going to have a breakthrough with this. Uh, I need to keep going. Watching a lot of the vidIQ tutorial stuff, it only takes one video to change your channel. And I always kept that mindset because I know my material is really, really good. And I'm not patting myself on the back. My material is great. I learned it from the master trainer himself. There's only a few of us that are still doing the coaching. I believe I'm the only one that has a YouTube channel. The other couple of guys coach on the professional level. I did a couple of pros. I don't really want to coach high tech bodybuilders anymore. The sport's gotten too dangerous. So I try to stick with my channel. And I always kept it in the back of my head, persistence, consistency, persistence, and consistency. I was going and doing one to two videos a week. I was putting out four, six, eight long videos a week. Then I experimented with some short content. Um, <clears throat> I knew it was a matter of time before something had to change. It took me over 14 months to get monetized. Wow. Some people get faster than others. <clears throat> and no one explains to you how monetization really works. You have one year, and at the time when I had started, you have to have 4,000 viewing hours within a year, a calendar year. So my calendar year was up, and I'm this close. And all of a sudden, I go over one month, and I lose 700 hours of viewing time. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm panicking. Where did my time go? What happened? What happened? Well, that first month, that I started the previous year falls off. So let's say it was February, I say 2020. Yeah. Well, now I'm into March of 2020 is the calendar year. So you have to start and get those 4,000 viewing hours within a calendar year. And losing 700 viewing hours, that's a lot of viewing hours to make up. And I was like, oh, my God, there were several times I just wanted to throw my hands up and walk away. And I kept telling myself, no, I am going to keep putting this video content out. I'm going to make my next video better than the video I just previously put out. I'm not going to stop. I've invested my time and money in this and I'm not stopping. And then I got monetized. And a month and a half later. I had a viral video go out, not immediately. I had put a video out, how to grow your, how to build your rear delts. And it started out slow to average. And then one morning I woke up and it was going crazy. The algorithm picked it up. It must have been a highly searched topic. And Right now, the video is at like 357,000 views. I got 7.2 or 7.3 thousand subscribers off of that one video. Wow. 
And I was like, now that was my first, oh my God, for YouTube. Whoa, this really yeah. does work. Yeah, yeah. Now I understand what going viral means because yeah. this didn't start out viral and all of a sudden, bam, within two weeks, the arrows on my analytics went straight up to the top. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I was just telling everybody. I was just so surprised. I never expected that to happen. And the video kept growing and growing and all the subscribers and it still gets pushed out there, not as much. So I go back and I just retweak the SEO a little bit to make sure everything is still searchable and it's never ending. You always wanna make sure that your SEO or search engine optimization is always on point because search terms change you know there. it could be one word and that changes the whole dynamics of the searchable term how to or do this it's crazy how sensitive the the algorithm can be when it comes to putting a video out and sometimes within the first 10 hours if a video is not performing well i'll change the title to a different title and i use the vid iq AI to help me create a title that gives you a scoring number or if I don't and if I, if I look and I'm not getting the clickable views really quick it might be the thumbnail the thumbnail might not be popping so my thumbnail guy usually builds me two or three thumbnails as a backup to swap them out similar but different colors make so much of a difference Look, if you're a woman who's well endowed, you go up there, smile, shake, you're going to get your views. You're going to get your clicks. You're a regular guy. It takes a lot to get people to click on you to make them watch your video. You really have to have something that's popping to make them click that video. Unless that until you start sense. developing a following. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely following. So was there anything specific in that video that you were able to like break down and see like how you can replicate or? Yeah, I used to try to be politically correct <laughs> because, okay, and this is the God's honest truth. I used to try and be politically correct and use all the right words, not medical terminology, but yeah. I kept it clean. Mm -hmm. And I finally said, you know what? I'm from New York originally. <laughs> Mr. New York is coming out. <laughs> and I start talking, I start talking about the gym idiots in New York wearing the wife beater t-shirts, dropping a couple left bombs, walking around with big front and side delts and ain't got shit in her back. And that's what it took to make that video go wild because now the people saw my personality where I was holding back. The information was still good, but it wasn't this personality. There were no F bombs in the previous videos. It was not really that entertaining. When I started putting my natural personality in, yeah, they loved it. They're like, oh my God, I could relate to this guy. Yeah, that, uh, that makes sense. I mean, obviously like, people, especially now, I know if they want authenticity, uh, that's real real connection. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, people are craving relationship. Um, so it's like- you, they don't you're, getting, like you're getting me authentically. I can guarantee yeah. you that. Yeah. <laughs> I put some classic videos out. I put, am I allowed to use a couple of good words on this? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I had a, I had a guy make a comment on a short reel. Now remember, a short's only like a 30 second out of a, a minute clip, mm -hmm. small video clip. And he's like, you know, you really make need to make sure you got proper form. And da, 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 da. He was really being an ass. Mm. So the next video I made, I addressed him. And I said to the asshole who made that comment in my video about proper form, firstly, that was a short form video, a piece of a long form video. All of my content talks about proper form muscle engagement. If you got a problem with what I got to say, please leave me your name and address in the comments because I'm going to mail you a box of dicks. <laughs> and I posted that I made that into a small short and posted it on my Facebook page and my friends were rolling. When they saw that, that's what people that's want to see because that's me. They know yeah. me. That's yeah. my personality, and they were rolling when they yeah. when they saw that. Well, it's kind of like you're you're becoming a character. Yeah. Uh, yes. In, in a show, an ongoing show, basically. Yes, they want to be entertained. Let me tell you, I can entertain the best of them.
<laughs> yeah, you know, I think that definitely is a huge, a huge piece of it. And I mean, that's something to definitely consider too. Of like, if this is going to be the out that you're going to go into, like, do you have that, like that, that it factor, if you will, of like having entertainment into what you're doing to grab attention? Because I mean, that definitely is something you have to consider. You can't be a uh, like boring and and uh, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not filtered. Yeah, yeah. By no means am I filtered. No, that, that makes complete sense. I mean, that's that's a good point. And that's awesome that you had that realization uh, and, and, and be able to see that stark contrast between yes. how you were prior to that particular big, video. Big difference. People can relate to my real personality. Not that the information I put out before wasn't correct. It's dry. I wasn't lo I was losing the attention of the people. When I put my real personality and I really get into it, they loved it. They just, because I don't have to try to be, I was trying to be perfect. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm tired of this shit, man. I'm just going to let it go. And they loved it. And from then on, all my video content has been raw. None of my videos are ever scripted. Or if they are, I chop the hell out of it to put my personality into it and not what the script is saying. All my videos, except maybe one or two were scripted and um, everything comes from here, from what I learned from Bob. And the best way to put it out is when it comes into my head about the topic we're talking about. I just tell my camera guy, who's one of my friends, all right, here's what we're gonna do. Let's get the angle, the picture, just push record. Now we might have to do that one or two times for me to get it right. But just push record and we're going and it's just flows. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I've seen, I've seen a lot more of that type of content uh, becoming more relevant and picking up steam mm -hmm. and less of that, that polished uh, yeah. type of look. I mean, it's kind of like even like the earlier days, like, like say like 2010 or so when like stock photos were like the big thing because like it was so cool and like everyone, everyone was able to look super professional but now yeah. it's like gone away from that. And it's like, people, when people see stock photos, they think of like scam or something. Like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, right. this isn't real um, it, it type right. of thing. So I think it's similar type of mindset with uh, even, like, any type of content, really. If it comes across almost too clean and too polished, then there's something wrong. <laughs> you know, it's like being in the church and listen to the, the priest or the pastor or the rabbi. You know, what are you thinking in the back of your head? How much more do I got to listen to this shit? I want to go home. <laughs> you know, you're freaking bored. Put some personality into it. Yeah. And that's and ultimately that's what I did. And that really changed the dynamics of my channel. Mm -hmm. It really did. Sense. So and the, what are you doing now with um the like with like the, the views that you're getting and the audience that you're building? Are you like directing them someplace specifically or like what what are you doing with that? I have a site called Buy Me a Coffee. It's pretty much a shop. And I direct them in the video to the link in the description to the buy me a coffee shop. And in the shop, it has my, my items for sale, um, my online coaching, which I call transformation X transform X. And there's a video in there that talks about what my 16 week program is. And in the videos that I'm doing, I talk about, the program in every video, the 16 weeks transformation X video, um, my training course videos and all the body parts, chest and shoulders, back and buys. I talk about the, you know, the amount of time that was put into creating those videos. Some of them are damn near almost two gigabyte long, almost an hour plus an hour and 20 minute long videos on beginner, intermediate and advanced training techniques on all the body parts, contest preparation, I cover everything and there's no fluff, I man. It, it took me a long time to put these videos together and I use the YouTube platform to promote them among other social media platforms because my Transformation X is on all my social media platforms, that video, it's pinned on all my, my pages. Yeah. And um, once you hit that, that link, it takes you to that buy me a coffee site and you can see the shop with all the stuff that I have listed. Okay. It, but it is um set of is youtube the the main driver for you 
It has been up until now. I recently joined into a leads generation course on how to generate leads from social media. And they talk about Instagram and they talk about uh, Facebook, TikTok. And I'm learning to use the views and the likes that I'm getting on my content to reach out to people to see if they're interested in online training or the coaching videos. Hmm. And I, I never realized that you could do that. It's so simple, but it's a lot of work. Matter of fact, tomorrow I have a call with a woman who's going to, we're going to negotiate her starting to do that for me where she puts me on the phone with them, gives me the lead, and then I can make the call and touch base with them. Because otherwise, you're sending out 100, 200 messages. Oh, yeah. Because you can't send out a group message. Yeah. Because you, the message has to be individual to you, personal to you, based on the video that you watched. Yeah. You know? I mean, you don't want cookie cutter. You want person. Personal. And I'm just learning and experiencing the different lead generation techniques that a lot of the creators are using on the other social media platforms. But man, it's, I've sent out hundreds and hundreds. I've had a couple of bites. I have a couple of irons in the fire and you just got to keep in contact with them and, and, you know, hold them accountable, but you can't pressure them too much because I'm not a high pressure sales guy. It's in today's economy, People really can't afford it. And I reduced the cost of my online coaching severely. I'm a $2,500, 16-week online guy. Um, I reduced it down to $1,600 to make it more affordable. It's only $100 a week for 16 weeks. That's a lot more affordable than it was at $2,400. But, yeah. I mean, I can't say that I'm not focusing on money because I'd be lying if I told you it ain't about the money. Everyone wants to make money. Yeah, but I also want to help people. I also want to help people, the people that want the help, the ones that I can hold accountable to follow what I tell them to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't I don't like high pressure sales when it comes to people. You know, if you can't make a decision, it's like the used car salesman, the car salesman at the new car lot pressuring you to buy this car. You know, do you really want that pressure from an online person that you're never going to meet possibly? No, there's too many scammers yeah. out there. And fortunately, my YouTube channel gives me some character reference that I'm a real person, not some made up entity on the Internet. You know, you can see me on all the social media platforms. All of my accounts are verified. I pay for that verification every month, that check mark. So, hey, I'm the real person. You're not I'm not some scammer. I'm, yeah. I'm the real person, you know, and I've talked to several of my people on the phone that have reached out to me from YouTube. I say, hey, why don't you just jump on a phone call with me? I'll help you answer your question a lot easier. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Let's get on the phone. How much is it going to cost me? It's not going to cost you anything, but it's going to take me an hour and a half to text you what I could tell you in 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, that makes complete sense. Because so if you're going to you... take the time to text me and answer me this question, you know, I need to take the time to, to answer you and help you. You know, it's only right unless yeah. I've got a million followers and I can't keep up to it. And then I got to hire somebody to help me. Yeah. But I'm not there yet. Someday. Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> but yeah. um, so would you say then, because like, you built up that success in YouTube and focusing on YouTube it is helping you now branch into the other social media areas. Like, do you see that that that's spilling over into those other channels? Yes. Yes. I wish I would have realized sooner. I would have started it sooner, but. I always thought, well, how are these other people on, on the social media platforms doing this? And you see all these influencers that the sales influencers pitching their sales pitch on how to get leads. And I'm thinking, how are these guys doing it? You know, where are they getting? How are they getting the leads? And then one of them reached out to me and we jumped on the call and it was an eye opener. Very informative person. Um, I highly recommend him, Mike Carnival, highly recommend him. But he explained and broke down 
how to generate these leads using the social media platform by people that like your comment, like or comment on your videos. And I never really thought about that before because I got so many other things going on, you know, yeah. that wasn't, but now it's every day, you know, and I, I have to get on a call tomorrow morning to work with a woman to help me with this because it just gets to be too much. Mm. We do all of yeah. you No, definitely. Yeah, when you have that type of volume, yeah, there has to be some level of organization or, or system in place. Um, yeah. So obviously you're not missing things because like with doing that type of outreach, it definitely is built on the consistency of it, not yeah. like one day doing it, next day not, and next day sending right. three messages and then 10 and then 50. Like you have to be consistent. And, um, and with those videos on social media, the other platforms – there's an algorithm there too. And you got to make sure you have the right hashtags and you're saying the right things in the description. Otherwise, the only people that see it are the people that are following you. Yeah. It doesn't go past that. You got to make sure that you're hitting on all eight cylinders to hit that algorithm right. And then like, Jesus Christ, it's another thing to figure out. Yeah. It just, it, it doesn't end. And now I, you know, I understand why guys like Mr. Beast are so successful. They all started at the same place. But when they started building up and making money, they hired people to do all this so they can concentrate on the creating of the content and let everyone else do the other stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you that's know? where you use it. And I'm getting to the exactly. point where I'm I'm fielding stuff out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that no, that's awesome. That's awesome to hear because obviously you are you're building that credible and that reputable channel and you're actually, you're getting, like you said, not only the monetization from it, but you're getting the, the credibility and it's spilling mm -hmm. over into other areas. So, I mean, it, it all just starts snowballing from there, but it, right. it all, it's, it, but it, the, the essence of that though is like, I hope people like listen to this take away is that it start, you are at that point now because you have that mentality of don't quit, like keep, keep consistently doing this, but then also paying attention to what, your your user wants like who the people it is that you want to connect with and not losing uh focus around that so i mean like this has obviously been really informative to like really hear about like your journey in building like your your platform and and, and really like pulling the curtain back and really just sharing with us like kind of like what you've gone through the mistakes that you've made like the challenges you've gone through and what you're looking to figure out now i mean i think right. that's really it's just in alignment with what you described before being authentic being real not trying to sugarcoat anything uh, mm -hmm. and i think that's what's really going to resonate with people listening to this is like it's this isn't uh, some guru wizardry uh, it, it's like real authentic this is what it takes to to have success uh in this path so as we work towards wrapping up uh, i i just want to see if like i always like to pick the uh, see what like my guests would like share in this aspect but if like you're talking to a fitness business owner um that was like maybe stuck where they're currently at or or looking to grow further like what from your background and your journey what you walked through like what would be like your biggest thing of advice or or insight that you would want to share with that person one is to never oversell yourself. If, and, and the reason why I say that is I'm not a computer generated coach. I learned it before there was such a thing as having certifications. Okay. Now all of the coaches are getting certifications on the computer and they're coming out as certified expert with no time in the game where I've got 43 years of working with hundreds and hundreds of people. Don't ever oversell yourself. Be honest with what you're capable of doing. Um, no two people are alike when it comes to the fitness world. You can't be cookie cutter. You have to be original to the person and you have to understand how to treat everybody as an individual with what they're looking to do. That's one of my biggest things. And when you put yourself out on the internet, it's there forever. So you really got to put yourself in check with what you say because people are going to fact check you. Mm -hmm. They're going to fact check you. Don't ever oversell yourself. And um, do your research when it comes to putting out videos. Like I gave the example earlier about the cure for cancer. If it's mm -hmm. not a highly searched topic, don't waste your time. Mm -hmm. Find yeah. something else. There's a lot of things trending. You just have to find what's trending and create it. Or look and see what's trending. 
and then put your spin on it and make sure that the SEO or search engine optimization is spot on. Don't nickel and dime yourself because you'll get so frustrated and you'll walk away from YouTube. I've almost walked away a couple of times and I had a few close friends say, no, just stick with it, stick with it. And I have, and like I said, I'm, I just turned 32,000 subscribers. I'm hoping by maybe end of September to hit maybe 50. I'd love to hit a hundred thousand by the end of the year, God willing. Um, but we'll see. YouTube is a learning experience every single day. Ups yeah, and downs, yeah, you know, ups and downs and building that channel following. I love that. I mean, that's really sound advice, I say, especially in an industry where it's almost becoming a game to over hype yourself and oversell yourself. Like it's crazy, yes. like the, the stuff that's out there. Um, and it's, it's, it's almost in a way also desensitizing people to things of like, what is reality? <laughs> There's no way a kid who's 23 years old can call himself a training expert. Yeah. 23 years old, a training expert? No, I'm an expert. I've been doing this for 43 years. You don't even, you haven't been doing this for 43 months. Don't oversell yourself because you're going to come across a guy like me who's going to eat you for lunch. I had a client that did the online nutrition certification and all this, and she's, selling herself as a nutrition expert, who'd you work with? Because you got a certification that says you're a nutrition expert? Look, yeah. you didn't go to college for 15 years to be a brain surgeon to call yourself a brain surgeon. Yeah. You know, you got maybe three months of a certification online. That's not going to make you an expert in, in no field anywhere. You're going to have knowledge, but you're not going to yeah. have an application. No. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think that's, an awesome thing that we always like push and reinforce that it's at the end of the day, like your, your product, your service has to be good. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's like, cause otherwise I don't, I don't care what type of marketing Avenue you try advertising, whatever way you try to spin it. If, if what you're offering isn't good enough, uh, it's just not going to cut it. People aren't going to be willing to, to pay right. uh, for that. And I, I think that's a hard realization that I think a lot of people need to focus on because they get so caught up in like, oh, let's, let's grow a six figure business quickly. Let's grow a seven figure business quickly. And they skip over the steps of like, do you actually have a product that is worth seven figures? I <laughs> think 90% of this, I think 90% of the stuff you see in all the social media platforms about grow your business and mm -hmm. I'm pulling in 10 and 20 grand a month is all BS. Because yeah, people absolutely. are looking for an answer. And if you have an influencer out there saying, hey, I'm pulling in ten or $20,000 a month and you're standing in front of a brand new red Lamborghini, people are going to be like, holy shit, if this guy can do it, I know I can do it. They, they pull on your heartstrings. Mm -hmm. I say 90% of it's nonsense because I'm in it every day and I'm not pulling in 10 and 15 grand a month off of my stuff. And I've been doing this for 43 years. These other people don't have my experience. So if I'm not doing it, I sure as shit know they ain't doing it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's just, yeah, a lot of it is like they just, they get into the game and ship of obviously like getting people to make a decision. And that's where you mm -hmm. see the, the churn and burn uh, it, yeah. type of an approach. And I, I've come across even like uh, <clears throat> fitness businesses, like one guy in particular, uh, it was he got caught up in like the whole guru uh sales coaching type of stuff and he grew his his uh, online fitness business um within a year or so it's like doing like 300,000 fantastic cool but then he had no substance beyond that uh so like he wasn't he like he literally had zero retention nobody stayed right. and now right. he's like on the verge of like a couple months going out of business and having nothing Right. And, and it's like so like, like and, and geography yeah. and geographics mean everything where's he doing it in rodeo drive in hollywood california you're going to make the money if the yeah. money's in the area you're going to make yeah. the money but eventually it's going to catch up to you because people aren't stupid yeah you know no, absolutely not no customers are coming even more smarter obviously with the information that's out there and how easy it is like what you said for the fact check things stuff like that like that's sure. not hard to do uh, so it's like you, you have to be the real deal like mm -hmm. and, and, and if you're not then 
<laughs> it's probably not the best idea to get yourself out there as, <laughs> as much as possible then. Um, you might make some money up front, but in the long yeah. run, it's going to come back to bite you. You're not going to, you're not yeah. going to have people keep coming back. No, definitely not. But uh, like on, on that note, I mean, like Rich, I definitely appreciate your time you're welcome. Uh, to you. hop on here and to, to talk with us, share your, share your background, your story, sure. your journey of things. Uh, it's obviously been a pleasure being able to, to speak with you and, and uh, speak, speak with someone else. It's you, I mean, the impact that you're having within your own, your community, your network, the people that you've worked with uh, personally and, and how you're willing to share this information uh, mm -hmm. to people. I mean, it's, it, that's one of the awesome things about this industry is, is people like you in it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Anytime you want to have this conversation again, come knock on the door. I, I enjoy doing this. I really, I really do. I really awesome. do. Again, well, thank you. I, I think we'll definitely take you up on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but it, if anybody I'm listening to this would want to uh, connect with you and, and continue this conversation with you, uh, where's the, the best place for them to? On, on YouTube, on YouTube, it's Championship Muscle. On Facebook, I have a Championship Muscle Facebook page. My own personal Facebook page is Richard Politano. Instagram is Coach Richard Politano, or just look my name up. And TikTok's the same way, Championship Muscle. All right, perfect. Uh, and, and we'll be sure to to link those in our show yes. notes as well. Yes, thank you. Uh, to make it super easy for anybody that does want to connect with you, Richard. Yeah, I'll uh, send you the links. Up. Perfect. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, because we can make that really easy for everyone. Um, but uh, that's that's a, a wrap for for this episode of the Fitness Business Freedom Show. We appreciate you taking the time to to listen and join us in our conversation. Thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. Have a great day.